What's the most common chassis in drifting? No, not that. No, no it's not that. And no, it's definitely not that. Why would that even be a question? It's of course the S chassis. And today, we're gonna be taking a look at the Balance Racing 180SX and talk about why the S chassis is one of, if not the most common chassis in drift. So we are at the one and only, the legendary Wall Stadium here in this Balance Racing 180SX. And a quick interjection, if you wanna drive this car, four other cars, and many, many, many more cars to come, as well as get access to courses and weekly coaching calls with the best esports drifters, real life drifters, and industry professionals, join Boundless Racing today. Without further ado, let's get into this car. So this car comes with VDC data, of course. Big shout out to the VDC guys. They are absolute Gs for allowing us to use their data in our cars, because frankly, they got the best data. And if we had to use something else, well, we'd be kind of screwed. As you can hear, this car comes with an RB26. It makes about a thousand horsepower and weighs about 1200 kilograms with 265 tires all around, I think. I have 255s in the front. Anyway, this car is an absolute blast. Sounds great sometimes. Very loud. It can be kind of annoying sometimes, but sounds great, feels great, and looks great. As you can see, this body kit is very unique. It's not like the standard D-Max kit you see on all the hatches. It's something a little bit different. Not to mention, it is the only right-hand drive car in the pack because America! No, but for real, haven't mentioned him yet, but Brandon Patrick, who has been the curator of all of the Boundless Racing cars so far, he's an absolute G. Big thanks to him, as well as Jared, aka TSC Kitten, and Angel, aka TSC Chapo, for allowing me to use this kit on this 180. Let's get into the meat of the conversation. Let's get into the schmeat of it. Why are S chassis still the most popular chassis and will they continue to be the most popular chassis? Well, let's go back to before I was born, 2003. At the summit of drifting in America, the S chassis was one of the most popular chassis you could drive with. I mean, shoot, they were cheap, they were reliable, they're basically a ready-to-go drift chassis from the start. Front engine, rear-wheel drive, and light. And thanks to the Fast and the Furious movies, marketability was there, as well as parts were everywhere. Every big American drifter really started on a S chassis. Chris Forsberg, Matt Field, Ryan Turk, Von Gittin, they all drove S chassis before they drove the cars they drive today. Especially now, there's so much car data and knowledge on how to set up the car, what parts are good, what parts are bad. Essentially, how to create a solid drifting platform without having a lot of trial and error. Because even though trial and error might be fun, it costs a lot of money. And, uh... Anyway, so why was it so popular? Well, if you look at the FD field back in the early 2010s, over 50% of the drivers drove an S chassis because, well, the only thing people knew. Every major drifting brand who made parts, guess what? They make S chassis parts first. So development was there. And unfortunately, what's happened over time is S chassis have become more and more expensive. Ever since about 2014, 2015, the quote unquote drift tax slash just everyone wanting to drift an S chassis, supply and demand, they've gone up in price significantly. I remember my dad looking at an S chassis back in 2014 for about three grand and it was really clean and had a KA. It was a hatch and it could have been our project car, but unfortunately he never bought it. And I wish he did because it probably would have been a cool car. And also a stock KA hatch that's really clean is worth anywhere from 10 all the way up to $25,000 these days. And that's not just COVID prices, that is genuinely how much these cars are worth. Now, you got a Facebook marketplace and you try to buy an S chassis, at minimum for a clapped out S chassis, you'll probably spend anywhere from six to $10,000. So the drift tax has really ruined them. There's not a lot of them anymore. And if you notice, ever since about 2022, less and less people are driving them. And there's really two reasons. 
Number one, they're becoming extremely expensive. And sure, although they were a consumer vehicle back in the 90s, not a ton of them compared to other cars such as the E36 and E46 3 Series were sold. And because of that, the S chassis is becoming less and less common. And they're getting more and more expensive. Whether it's the taxi themselves or the parts, S chassis are becoming fewer and fewer because of how expensive they are becoming. And it's being overtaken by the Nissan Z, the BMW E chassis, such as the E36 and the E46, because there's a lot more of them and they're a lot more affordable. And number two is marketability. The S chassis card has been played so much in drifting. There's not a lot of uniqueness that you can do with an S chassis unless you put some crazy motor or body kit or something onto it. They pretty standard car. So unless you have some crazy motor, crazy body kit, or a legendary S chassis, well, driving one in competition and trying to be a marketable driver isn't going to be in your favor. Now, sure, if you're James Dean, if you drove a smart car, that would be marketable. But if you're the regular Joe Schmo just trying to start out drifting, driving an S chassis probably isn't your best bet because you're not going to get a lot of market dollars out of it. And you're going to have to spend a lot in parts. And as I said before, S chassis parts are getting more expensive. S chassis are still extremely popular, but in five years, do I think they will be the most popular drift chassis? Heck no. If I were to put money on it, probably the Nissan Z or the BMW E46 will become the new popular chassis. But then that begs the question, will those become super expensive and out of reach? Now, I'm not going to say 10 year old me thought the C6 was going to be the next big drift car. Well, in 2016, I thought Dirk Stratton was a genius and I genuinely thought the C6 was going to be the next big drift car. And lo and behold, it's kind of becoming one. So what's next in the drifting world? We have the S chassis, we're having the Z's and the E46s and the Corvettes now. What's going to be the next big chassis that's going to wow everyone? Leave your guesses in the comments below because personally I really don't have a clue. And with that said, that is the end of this video. If you did enjoy this little yap session, be sure to like and subscribe. Join Boundless Racing today. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next video.